Hi folks, I'm Marty Raven, and for the next few minutes, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna have the opportunity of explaining the story behind the songs uh, that's on the brand new album, The Back 40 from Rural Rhythm Records. Uh, it's probably the, the most bluegrass album that I've ever done. Uh, I grew up loving bluegrass music, uh, playing it for years and years and years, and, and you know, it, it's kind of a return to that. As you might say, it's a full circle. Anyway, it's, uh, it, it's something that, uh, that as you listen to the lyric and as you listen to the instrumentation, you'll find out that it is that traditional bluegrass that, uh, that I literally grew up doing and, and loving. So uh, the storylines in the songs uh, differ uh, for, for one reason and one reason only, and that is, is to, to try to entertain you as you would listen to it, just like it, if you'd come to a stage show and watch that. Uh, entertaining's a, a real important thing to me, and I, I, I take a lot of value in that, trying to entertain people, and when they leave, we leave them with a good feeling. So here for the next few minutes, uh, hang on tight. Uh, they don't tell them where we're gonna go with the stories. That Janie Baker uh, leads the, the CD off. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's just a, a really good song that, that, that talks about this little mystery woman that's been kind of rocking around for the for the past 40 years of my career. Uh, with the group Shenandoah, we had an awfully big record called Janie Baker's Love Slave. In fact, as, as you listen to the to the first line of the, the verse, it says, uh, uh, you know, you know, is she fact or fiction? You know, you can't ever tell. Anyway, nonetheless, she's still out there moving mountains. And uh, uh, as you listen to it, uh, you'll find it hard driving. You'll find it with that Jimmy Martin feel that I love so much. Uh, that, that literally uh, is a great deal of, of, of what I perceive in my heart, what, what good driving bluegrass is. I, I don't think anybody done it better than Jimmy Martin. She's just no love turned memory really is a, is a tune that uh, uh, it may sound familiar to you uh, and, and with good due reason. But you probably wouldn't think of it in, in the sense that uh, as far as where it came from, uh, we were at a bluegrass festival and, and uh, my brother Tim uh, came to me and said, I, I, I got this killer song, I, I, I want you to hear it. And, uh, and I said, okay, he said, Charlie Pride did it. And I said, okay, and I, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with most of the Charlie Pride stuff that's been out. And I said, what is this, is anybody going to San Antonio? He goes, no, it's a song called She's Just No Love Turned Memory. I said, she's just an old love turned memory. He said, that's it. And I said, I said, you'd have to pick the tempo up. Uh, he goes, no, that's what I'm talking about. And he, and he took my guitar out of the case and he sat down and he played the tempo for it. And I thought, man, that's killer. Uh, because, you know, it, of course, the, the storyline is great as well, too. And it's one of those kind of things that, you know, that is a good filler uh, in an album. You know, you, you, you want songs that stand out above the others, but you also want something that's really good and solid you know, to, to make an album listenable. In other words, that you're willing to go through this one to get to the next one, and it didn't, it didn't deter you from doing that. She's just an old love turned memory. The Late Night Cry, The Whippoorwill is a tune that, uh, I don't know, uh, when I, when, Timmy Crouch played fiddle uh, on the project, and, and he done an absolutely wonderful, wonderful job. In fact, he, uh, he, as they say, can carry the mail. Anyway, nonetheless, uh, uh, when I was telling him what I wanted on the on the on the fiddle, uh, after he heard the song, he got it right away, and he knew good and well that that uh, he said you want it slow and draggy, as my aunt would say. So I said, well, you know, uh, whatever that means. I said, I, you know, I kind of want that 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 Bill Monroe, Kenny Baker, uh, lonesome, just I mean, just just wherever wherever it's at, just just drag it out, you know, just throw down on it, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, the surprising thing about that is, though, the, the tune, uh, uh, old brother Teague had sent it to me, and, and, uh, and you know, I, I liked it, and I even liked the demo that was on it, but I, but I thought it needed to be just a little bit more, more high and lonesome and, and, and bluesy. And therefore, Tim provided that with the fiddle, but I had to try to make sure that I got that out vocally as well, too, because it tells a, it's kind of a, a fairly gloomy story. You know, anytime you sing about whippoorwills, <laughs> You know, you, you're going to think that it's, you know, it's, it's a sad song, and this is. But you know, it, it just kind of moves in and out of the out of the lyric and, and the and the melody of the music so well that uh, that it really actually makes it very handsome. 
And uh, to find out that, that, that Randall Hilton was one of the writers and Paul Kraft as well, uh, uh, you know, was, was very interesting to me because, uh, I mean, I remember all the stuff that, that Randall had done. And, and of course, you know, the, the, the two biggies that, that the Osmond brothers did that Paul had written, uh, you know, it just, I don't, I don't know, it just kind of seemed fitting to, for us to go back in time to 40 years trying to entertain people to bring them up to something that, that, that continued like that. So, uh, the late night cry of the whipper will. This is another one of those tunes, uh, Slowly I'm Falling, uh, More in Love with You. Webb Pierce had a big record with it. Uh, I may have remembered listening to that when I was younger. Uh, I know I've heard it since then, but uh, uh, who had brought me to it more than anything else in the world was Jimmy Martin and the Sunny Mountain Boys. Uh, uh, my dad, <laughs> bless his heart, he, he went to a flea market uh, where we were where I was born and raised in Sanford, Florida, and he bought a couple of bluegrass eight tracks, and, and they were bootlegs. You know, I mean, that's exactly what they were, and the reason why we knew it, you know, only after is because, you know, when we when we eventually got the albums, there was three or four songs on that album that wasn't even on that. It was it was off another one. Anyway, so slowly was on one of these 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 eight track tapes. Now I've dated myself, but then again, we're talking forty years of trying to entertain people, so that's not really taken far from it. But the one thing that I loved about it, and the one thing that I really wanted on this record, because the record was a bluegrass album, is because I wanted to make sure that that drive and that intensity of leading in from one song to the next keeps that listenability so that, so that somebody wants to go and, and listen to it to get to the next one. And I, I think we pulled it off. Daniel Grindstad played some absolutely wonderful five string. And, and uh, as Jimmy would say, that's it, son. Well, when you think of songs like uh, uh, like Beulah Land or uh, uh, I'll Meet You Just Inside the Eastern Gate, uh, you know, you, you, you think of songs that, uh, that really uh, loving the Lord and knowing that, that what your eternity is going to bring you to uh, could not miss with a tune uh, like this. Rusty Goodman uh, wrote a song that, that literally I, I believe just as Beulah Land has been for us uh, in the past uh, look for me or I will be there too it, it's literally going to be the, the same thing you know the, uh, the vocals on it you know old brother Tim you know man he done such a good job on the harmony parts and, and all but you know it's just it's the story of realizing that, 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 that one of these days that our hope being in Christ is that, that, that we're going to be there in the land of Beulah. Uh, and for those that, that maybe have not got there yet, it's the story of someone that says, look, when you get there, look for me. I, I, I'll be waiting for you. Now, you're going to be captivated with all that you see. You're going to be overtaken by, by realizing that the Lamb of God, you, you, you finally laid eyes to it. And you've literally walked into a city where the Lamb is a light and the roses never fade. But look for me. Look for me because I, I'll be there too and I want to see you. 